Auschwitz, the Nazis and the final solution. In 1933, Adolf Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany. Over the next six years, the Nazi party set about imposing its racial and biological theories on German society. Jews were the primary target of Nazi hatred, but political opponents, homosexuals, the asocial and gypsies were also viciously persecuted, and many thousands of disabled people were murdered during the so-called euthanasia program. In 1939, Germany invaded Poland and ruthlessly implemented Nazi theories of racial and biological superiority. It was the beginning of a process that would end in genocide. An obscure Polish town called Oswiecim, known by the Germans as Auschwitz, would be central to the evolving Nazi plans. German Expansion Pre-war Poland Greater Germany Occupied Territories German allies and dependent states. Between 1938 and 1944, Germany conquered and occupied almost all of Europe, from France to the Soviet Union and from Norway to Greece. Anti-Jewish policy. Initial Nazi policy regarding Jews was to drive them out of Germany. Throughout the 1930s anti-Jewish propaganda, racist laws, discrimination and expulsions forced many Jews to leave Germany and Austria. But when the Germans invaded Poland in 1939 and the Soviet Union in 1941, millions of Jews, including many who had been expelled from Germany, were now within the borders of the German Reich. Faced with reverses on the battlefield and unable to expel the Jews under their control, the Nazis adopted a policy they called the final solution to the Jewish question which was the plan to kill every Jew in Europe. They set about this task methodically, constantly seeking ways to improve and refine the process of murder. Even when the tide of war turned against them, the destruction of the Jews remained a Nazi priority. Other groups who did not fit into the Nazi vision were also imprisoned, enslaved, persecuted and murdered. These included gypsies, mainly Roma and Siti, Jehovah's Witnesses, homosexuals, political opponents, asocials, Soviet prisoners of war, the hereditarily diseased and disabled. Ghettos With the occupation of Poland in 1939, the Germans sought to isolate and contain Jewish people under their jurisdiction until a final decision was reached on their fate. Beginning in Poland and proceeding throughout much of Nazi-occupied Europe, small areas of cities and towns were sealed off and turned into ghettos, and the local Jews were confined within them. In cities such as Lodzed, Warsaw, Krakow, Riga and Villa, Jews were thus imprisoned and subjected to overcrowding hunger, disease and summary execution. Leaving the ghetto without permission was punishable by death. When the Germans enacted the final solution, their plan to annihilate all of Europe's Jews, the ghettos served as staging areas for concentrating people for deportation to Auschwitz and other extermination camps. Camp System The first concentration camps in Germany were created immediately after the Nazis' rise to power in 1933, to imprison communists and other political opponents. Prisoners received harsh treatment, and many died, but these camps were not extermination camps. By the late 1930s, the SS, a Nazi force of special paramilitaries, began to use prisoners in German concentration camps as forced laborers for construction projects and enriched themselves personally in the process. War industries also created a demand for labor, and the concentration camps became an integral part of the forced labor system. At the height of the war, hundreds of forced labor camps existed across Europe. As Germany moved towards a policy of annihilation for the Jews and other groups, 
some of these concentration camps became holding facilities for those destined to be murdered elsewhere. Still other camps became killing centers, extermination camps. Extermination camps. As the policy of full-scale genocide developed in late 1941 and early 1942, the Germans constructed camps and facilities specifically designed for mass murder. Built within the borders of pre-war Poland, these camps included Chelmo, Beltek, Sobaba, Treblika, Marjdik and Auschwitz. At Marjdik and Auschwitz the functions of concentration and labor camps were combined with those of an extermination camp. At the killing centers, most of the prisoners, overwhelmingly Jewish, were either gassed or shot soon after they arrived. The largest and most infamous of the extermination camps was Auschwitz-Birkenau. Auschwitz The complex that the Germans built at Auschwitz was unique. It contained all three major elements of the Nazi camp system. A concentration camp. A forced labor camp. And a extermination camp. In addition, plans were made to turn part of the Auschwitz complex into a model Aryan community in the conquered lands of Eastern Europe, where German citizens would have access to good soil plenty of living space and abundance of slave labor. The initial area was called Auschwitz I or Auschwitz Main Camp. This was expanded to include Auschwitz II, Birkenau, the largest of the German extermination camps, where over a million people were murdered. Eventually a slave labor camp, Auschwitz III, Bermowitz, was added. Barracks After the first Polish prisoners were brought to Auschwitz I in June 1940, 20 old brick cavalry barracks already standing there were sealed off, with barbed wire that the Poles were forced to scavenge themselves from the surrounding area. Other buildings were also modified to serve as prison barracks as plans called for an inmate population of 10,000. A steel gate was installed bearing the message Arbeit marked free, work makes you free, the same message that could be seen over the entrance at Dachau concentration camp. Block 11 The most feared place in Auschwitz was a punishment facility in the main camp, known as Block 11. This prison within a prison served to intimidate the Polish prisoners who formed much of the camp's early population. Within it, up to 100 prisoners could be packed in several common cells. Some inmates were locked in small dark rooms that lacked light or ventilation. The worst area was a group of four tiny cells referred to as standing cells. Prisoners were locked in these cells for hours or days. Each room had barely enough space for one person to stand. The cells were completely dark and without heat. At times more than one person was put into this tiny area, making any movement impossible. Prisoners who tried to escape were locked up again and left for days or weeks to suffer until they died. The murder of individuals and small groups of prisoners at Auschwitz I was commonplace before the mass murder of Jews began in 1941. Most of the early victims were Polish political prisoners. Inmates, many from Block 11, were often taken to the adjoining courtyard and shot, after which their bodies were burned in the crematorium.
crematorium. When policies of mass murder were implemented in 1941, the use of Zyklobi, a poison gas used in the camp for fumigation, was found to be a more efficient method of killing than shooting. Poison gas had the potential to kill thousands of people quickly, but the three incinerators at the crematorium could only dispose of a few bodies per hour. By working in cooperation with Topf and Sons, manufacturers of crematoria equipment, the Germans successfully increased the efficiency of the crematorium and set the stage for mass murder at Auschwitz I, and an even larger mass murder center at Auschwitz II.